Amen. Let's, let's get in, into this. Let's turn over, if you can, and I wanted to test some. Turn over to Genesis, the 45th chapter. The 45th chapter of Genesis. Amen. We got some of them that's old school. I love old school. Amen. All old school in the house, just say it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. In God we trust. Everybody else, we're going to check. Amen. Turn over to Genesis, the 45th chapter. And we're going to read starting at that fourth verse. And it says, Joseph said to his brothers, come near to me, please. And they came near. And he said, I am your brother, Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. <laughs> and now do not be distressed or angry with yourself because you sold me here. For God sent me, for God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in this land two years, and there are yet five years in which there will be, another, uh, there will be neither plow nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not to you who, has sent, who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh, a lord of all his house, and ruler over all of Egypt. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you right now for your presence. We thank you. For, for just giving us life, health, and strength. We thank you for an opportunity to lift our voices and uplift your name. We thank you for the opportunity, God. Father, many didn't have that opportunity, but I thank you right now that you've given us the ability, you've given us the time to worship you today, and we thank you, we praise you, we magnify you, for this is a day that you have made, God. We will rejoice and be glad in it in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, touch this lips of clay right now, touch my body, touch our mind, Father, that you'll speak, Father, and I'll sit down in you, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you, I praise you, and I magnify you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 You know, for several weeks we've been talking on the subject of community. We've been touching on community. For the last two Sundays, we've been touching on community. And, and what I love about the very first one, it says community is God's plan. Community is God's plan. It, 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 it wasn't your plan. It was God's plan. Amen? Right. It's important to have community because in community, there's something about connecting to someone else. When we get that understanding that connecting to someone else will cause a transformation in the lives of somebody beside you, we won't hesitate to connect to that person next to you. Yes, we may have some situations in our lives. I might not like that you wear some Jordans. I might not like that you have an Auburn T-shirt on or an Alabama T-shirt on. But that's irrelevant because when it's all said and done, my connection to you means more than the team I cheer for. Yeah. Community is important to the body of Christ. And you know something? If it's important to God, it should be important to you. We've blown it off so many years about community because society has told us they have been sifting us like wheat. They have been sifting us. And the very thing that separated us in society, we brought it into the church. And what we did is we moved from one side of the congregation to the other side of the congregation, to the pulpit, to this part, to that part. And we all have separated, but we all come together in his name. How is it possible for us to be in one place and be separate? But he said when two and three are gathered in his name. That sounds like you'd have to be a connection. It sounds like there has to be a relationship with one another. Or maybe I'm wrong. It sounds like what scripture says. They were in one accord, in one place. And the spirit of the Lord fell upon that place. And guess what? The results of them coming together caused 3,000 people to give their life to Christ, all because the men and women of God decided to come together. Yes. Community. Community is important. I promise you we'll, we'll, we'll get somewhere. If it's important to God, it should be important to you. Mm. Sometimes I just don't want to leave there because... For some of us, it's not important. Society has told you that you can do this all by yourself. I don't need nobody. I don't need Sally to tell me what's going on. Please, Lord, don't let no Sally be in the building. 
I don't need no joy. Well, I don't need a barren Lord to be in, in there to get this started. I don't need them anymore because I'm hurt, oh God. But God's saying, I need for you to come together because my plan says otherwise. We got to stop looking at society's plan and look at what God's plan is for his people. Mm. If we can learn to shake off those things that society has placed on us when we come together, if we do it as often we come together, when you do leave this place, you'll forget that you got the jacket of salvation on. That means you'll walk in the spirit of God when you're outside of the building. It's not about you being here and giving God the glory. It's about when you give God the glory outside the building. Something about community that makes a difference. The standard, I was praying and I said, Lord, so what about this community thing? He said, listen, the problem is, is that the standard that you have, I've given to you. Listen, I can't tell someone that's not a believer that the standard that God has for them to walk in. I can't I can't make them walk in something that they have not committed to. But he said, remind my people that those ones that have confessed, those ones that have said that their blood brought saints of God, their standard is different than that of the of the world. The standard is different, y'all. I I can't walk in here just because I'm upset with Felicia. Because it was a bad time. I wanted to watch this movie, but she decided to watch the other one. And I was just the old good husband. And I sat there and watched this. (sighs) <sighs> this movie. <laughs> Frustrated, disgusted, why are we watching this? But I carried that thing because it bothered me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I carried it not just from the time we ended the movie. I slept with it that night. On, and I said, Lord, how many times am I going to have to give up my movie time for her, Lord? On, how many times am I going to have to skip over this good Marvel movie because she want to watch a romance? <laughs> I carry carried those things and I walked away from the home and I left home and I got dressed for church and I came to church and I got in here and I'm still holding that very thing that separated us and I want to give God some glory with some dirty hands. It's something we got to stop right now because because oftentimes we don't want to clean up before we go before the presence of God. We don't want to take a bath sometime before the presence of God. We come to him any kind of way because we're like children. They go play in the mud. They get up and run in your house and leave tracks all over the place. It doesn't matter to them because it's not their house. But when you respect the anointing of God, when you respect who you are as a body of believers, you will have a tendency to say, Lord, before I come in the door, I want to take a shower right now, God. Lord, I want to clean myself up. I want to get my best garments out right now and put on your glory, God, so that when I enter the presence of you, God, that I'll do it in spirit and in truth. I just want to be right before you, God. I promise you we're going to get somewhere. Community is important. Society's society's purpose is one thing. God's purpose is another. And if I have to come from a subject, I know you're saying about time. If I had to come from a subject, I want to come from the subject of trusting God and forgiving man. Trusting God and forgiving man. Look, why are those two together, trusting God and forgiving man? The plan of God involves me as a member of the body of Christ to connect to my father. It, you know something, it is easy for me to do so because I don't have to worry about distractions. It's all, all about me and God at that moment. I can come before his presence and it's me. You ever been in your prayer closet and you feel like you just didn't want to leave? You ever been at a point where you're worshiping God and you just didn't want to get away from that point? You just stayed right there in God? We trust God, don't we? We trust him because, because Lord, it's not hard to love you. It's, it's not hard. It's not challenging to love you. I don't really see you, Lord, but I feel you, God. And every time you come around, you transform my life. You change my life. You call some things to be changed around me. So it's easier for me to love you, God. But it's just them creatures you call humans. 
It's the ones that you call humans I have a difficult time with because they're, they're, they're just challenging God. And, and, and you know something, God, they don't have the same, the same outlook I have, Lord. They don't root for the same team, God. They don't wear the same clothes. They, they, they just seem like they're different. And every time I try to connect to them, I ha it's a struggle, oh God. And he said, but me and you are just the same. There are things about you that, that I don't really agree with. That's what God is saying. But instead, God said, I still embrace you right where you are because I've created you from the very beginning of time. I knew you had some defects on you because of sin that came in the world. But because I love you so much, I look beyond your faults and I see your needs. That's how God deals with us on a daily basis. And, and, and we say we love God and we trust God because what he's able to do in our lives. But the, trust, the love and trust of God is one thing. And then the, the, the forgiveness of, and, and the love of man is another, right? But I want to tell you that's a false mentality because the two of them come from the same cup. The two of them come from the cup of love. See, if you drink of the cup of love that will bring you closer to God, you can't help but drink of the cup of trusting and forgiving your brother and bringing them close to you. Sometimes you got to water down with what you believe and say, and say you know, some, I, I just can't deal with that. But God is saying, I created you to deal with that. I made you different than your brothers outside. I made you different than the ones that, that you see on a daily basis. I've created you to be anointed. I created you to reach out to my people. But you've got to shake off yourself. Amen. The plan of God is different. But it doesn't end with that. It, 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 has to be caught, it has to be drawn in with love. It has to be, you have to pick up that cup every day of love and drink from it. You, you, can't, you can't go without, listen, listen, fasting is one thing, but when it comes to love, you can't fast from love. You can't take away and say, I'm not going to go in the presence of love because I don't want to deal with Sally today. I don't want to deal with Bob today. I, I don't want to drink of love, but, but you say you're my child. Yeah. Amen. Lord, I thank you for the word, no matter what. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. A kingdom divided cannot stand. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know what's wrong with our churches on today? Forgive me, Pastor. You know what's wrong with our churches on today? There are so many churches out here. You have a church across the street. You have a church down the street. You have a church in Athens. You got a church here, a church in, in Madison. You have church, 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 church. All of them supposed to be in the body of Christ, but it's hard for us to come together and see each other at work. It's hard for us to walk around in, in, in the grocery stores and we see them because they're Baptist or they're Presbyterian or they're Catholic or they're this or they're that. All of these different people, all of us are blood bought, amen? All of us are the children of God. And if that is true, so because that is true, I should be able to say, you know something, I don't like that burgundy, but I love the person that has the burgundy on. I look beyond what I see on the outside and I see what God sees in the inside. That's because the spirit of the Lord is with you every day. So if he's with you, when you see her, you see his child. You see your child every day when you see him and they smile and they run to give you a hug. I saw when Mama Ruth was here and her grandbaby came to give her a hug. She lit up, although she had tears at the moment. She lit up when she saw her. See, that was a different because that's family, because it's a bloodline. And see, that same thing should happen when I see you in the street. Same thing should happen when I talk to you on this place or that place. Our love for one another will supersede our issues with one another. But I got to learn to get to that part of forgiveness. Amen? The cup of love. Listen, 1 John, the fourth chapter in the 20th verse says, If anyone says, I love God and hate his brother, he's a liar. Look, look, I want you to know that I saw that in Scripture and I put it on this pad here. That's what the Scripture says, that he's a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. Wow. Lord, I've been telling you I love you all this time. But I got a hard time with my neighbor, God. 
I've been telling you my love for you is it goes supersedes anything that goes on around me. But, Lord, I've got an issue with my, my neighbor, so how do I redeem myself back to you? He said, well, go to your neighbor and redeem them, and you both come to me. You just need for you to, to walk together, to talk together. And thank you, Lord. You know something? If you can't forgive me, it's all right. I'm not going to shake the dust from my feet until God calls me home. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give her, give me, give me three days. Let me give her three days. I'm coming back the next day. And I'm going to say, hey, you, you ready to go with me now? No, you ain't ready yet. I'll be back next week, I promise you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My relationship with you is more important on how I feel than whether I feel. And I have to look beyond how I feel. Your feelings get in the way of the anointing of God every time. Your feelings get in the way. Our emotions get in the way. Somebody said, listen, your emotions is just like a signal light. If you're driving your car and you put your signal on, that car is not going to swerve off the road. That signal light indicates to the person behind you, the person in front of you, maybe on the side of you, that I'm changing lanes or I'm getting ready to turn. That's all it does. But when you allow your signal light to direct your car, you're missing God. Don't let your emotions direct you. And guide you in the ways that you shouldn't go. Amen. Yes. Yes. Anyone that say they love God and hate their brother yes. is a liar. For he who does not have his brother whom, whom, whom he has seen and not, he cannot see. If, if, if he's seen his, if I see you and I can't love you, how can I see God? I say, how can I see or know about God and love him? How is it possible? How is it possible? Challenging. Yes. Amen. Listen, look at, look at this scripture here. Um, we're going to go right here in the Genesis, the 45th chapter. It says, the very first step, thank you, Lord, the very first step in forgiveness. Yes. Very first step in forgiveness. Listen to me. You have to confront the people that offended you. Wow. Now we're getting quiet. I get it. I get it. Listen, your confronting is not what you think it is. Your confronting now is saying, Pastor, I really don't appreciate what you said to me. That's your confronting according to society. But my confronting when it comes to the things of God supersedes this. Listen, the scripture says, so Joseph said to his brothers, come near to me please. <laughs> Joseph never did anything to his brothers. All he did was what the father told him to do. He never did anything to him. So when he came to him, although he had the power, although he had the authority to, to put them to death, to put them in prison, Joseph came to them and he said, come to me, please. Wow. Joseph had the authority to do this, but he decided to come in a humble way, in humility. Listen, these were the same brothers that captured him. These are the same brothers that put him in a pit. The same, the same brothers that were planning on killing him, these very ones that did this, that's the ones he had to go and he said, please come to me. Your walk when it comes to your, your, your walk as a body of believers, it supersedes what somebody feels or what they're doing right now. You have to act as though you are an ambassador of Christ and you need to look beyond that thing. And you said, come to me, please. I don't want to come to you. It's all right. I still love you. I, I, I do. Maybe I'll send you a text. Maybe I'll hit you up on Facebook because my relationship with you supersedes the way I feel. I didn't say you didn't feel bad, because throwing in that pit, I'm quite sure he, he had a limp afterwards, amen? It doesn't say it in scripture. I don't want you to get that misconstrued. But he threw them in a pit. I'm quite sure that there was damage. There was something that happened when they was thrown in a pit. All these things happened in the hands of the people that should have loved him. That's why we have so much turmoil in our churches today. Because when we come to church, we, we don't realize that there's human beings that come to church. We don't realize that there are people that we see every day, they come to church. They still love God, amen. They still love God, 
and they still are working. God is still working on them. So when there's an offense that happens, it is my responsibility to get it right with that brother or get it right with that sister. We just got to get over ourselves sometimes. The very ones that did it to him put him in the situation that he was in. I can imagine the anger. I can imagine the frustration that he had from the time that he was sold. He was sold into slavery. They not only rejected him, they got rid of him. His brothers. I know Reuben tried to come. I, I remember Reuben trying to save his life. You know, hey, y'all, we, we, we might not want to do that. We, we don't want to kill him. Let's just throw him in the hole. It, it's all right. I can imagine him standing there looking at his brothers and saying, Reuben, you tried. Judah, I, I know what you did. You, you ripped your clothes afterwards after they, they sold me in because I was gone away. I, I can feel your pain, but you still didn't save me. But I love the way Joseph handled this. He carried them through some, some tests, and, and he, was, he was doing a lot of things. I was thinking sometimes he's just enjoying this, isn't he? But everything that Joseph did, if you get, just read the story, everything that Joseph did set them in a place that they could be blessed. Everything that he did put them in a place that they can be blessed. Amen? So in order, this is the second thing that he did in order to, to get over this, this thing of all forgiveness. He said he had to release them from the guilt of their offense. He had to release them of the guilt of their defense. When he first told him, hey, I'm Joseph, yeah. everybody like, <laughs> I, 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 I never thought that we'll meet again. I, I never thought. And, and the very one that they had to go get something from yeah. is the one they had to stand before. Wow. Can you imagine being there, having the authority that Joseph had and not do what normal human beings would do? It's saying, get on your knees because I'm finna put you to put you to sleep. All that stuff y'all did to me, can you imagine him wanting to just lash out? But because of the spirit of God in him, because of the things that were in him, he looked beyond that. And he said, listen, you are my brothers. He said, listen, I love you. Everything he did was saying, I love you. And it says later on in scripture that he just cried. He just cried. He cried. Listen, his tears were because his love for his brothers, it, it superseded what they did to him. But when are we going to get to the point where we just love like that? Yes. Joseph did some stuff right before Jesus came. Oh, we're seeing it now. The very things that he did, didn't Jesus do the same for us? Mm. you got to learn to release some people in your life from their offense. Genesis 45 and 45, 45th chapter and 5th verse says, and now do not distress or, or anger with, be angry with yourselves because you sold me here. He reminds, listen, there's nothing wrong with reminding them where you hurt me. It's okay. It's all right. Listen, I got it, guys. You were frustrated. I was always telling dad on you. I was always going back and reporting back to dad and telling him what the deal is. And all he did is get on you guys and make sure you were doing the right thing. You know something? I didn't miss it because I was obeying the father. You'll get it before it's over. He obeyed the father and got in trouble. You obeyed the father and you get in trouble because you want to go to work and you want to pray for Sally. But Bob on the other side of the cubicle hears the prayers and he gets offended because you're obeying the Father. But God is saying, don't worry about the times that you are getting offended because where they were telling on you, I've set it up for you to reach two or three more people. It doesn't matter what goes on around you. When you learn that God's plan is always setting you up to be victorious, it's always about his plan. It's always about him. You, if we could just step down out of ourselves. So I learned to release people from their, from their, their offense. When it comes to forgiveness, the offense that somebody has against you there's a penalty behind that, am I right? If you run a stoplight and the police officer is there, there's a penalty for running a stoplight. If you commit murder, if you steal, if you do this, if you do that, there are penalties written in law for what you have done. 
But listen, when it comes to forgiveness, forgiveness says it doesn't matter what you did. Although you deserve to be punished, I release you and I give you the punishment to do as you will with it. Releasing yourself from the punishment. That's what you're giving to other people. Amen. John Cavan explains that forgiveness is like a creditor that is, that is said to forgive uh, when he's, he declares by granting a discharge that the money has been paid to him. But without any payment, through voluntary kindness, he expunges the debt. Do voluntary, he expunges the debt. The debt that you owe. Mm. How many people that you know right now that you owe a debt to? How many people that you have offended? How many people that, that, that you crossed them the wrong way and, and they, they, they have it there and, and they walked up to you and said, I forgive you. Mm. Forgiveness is a cancellation of the debt and, and, and no matter what strings are attached, you, you don't have to pay. You, you don't have to pay it. It doesn't matter. Joseph had to release his brothers from that. And, and once he released them from that, there's something that happened in the room. Once he released them, even though they never said a word, can you imagine the release that they have knowing that he didn't convict them? Yeah. Yeah. He forgave them no matter what went on. Yeah. Third thing, you got to recognize where he was and he had to recognize what God's plan was. Amen. Recognize where you are. You may be in a, a, a trying time right now. Yeah. You may be going through an issue right now, a problem right now. But if you don't hang on to the fact that it's in God's plan that you be delivered from where you are, yeah. you will have a tendency to sit there and in the, in, in waddle in the very thing that God says, I'm releasing you from. I just need for you to be patient enough to wait for me. God sent me before you to preserve you a remnant on this earth. <laughs> you may have put me in that hole. You may have sold me in slavery. You may have wanted to kill me. But no matter what you wanted to do, it was all in God's plan. Not just for me, but it was for you too. Because God said, I'll suffer for my sake. I'll suffer for your sake that, that while I'm suffering and when I come out of it that you will be redeemed. It's a remnant that God is trying to get for you and I but if you understand where you are and you stand in it you will see that others are delivered. Others are set free. He's preserving a remnant. A remnant. Listen. Thank you Lord. Joseph was right there doing the will of his natural father and then he switched it up and he started doing the will of his spiritual father and he started lining some things up and he started taking beatings or this and that. He was even ran away. He was, he was convicted of a, a attempted rape in the whole nine yards. The brother went through some stuff, y'all. He went through some stuff, to be, but, but while he went through it, if he had just gave up in the midst of it, the remnant wouldn't have survived. It was not the promise that God gave Joseph. It was the promise that went to Abraham. You don't get it yet. If God promised your great-grandparents something to go manifest in the family, guess who's in the bloodline? Guess who has to walk out their part? And if you don't walk out your part, you will find out that the plan starts to die. So that's why others are praying for you. I want you to make it, Pastor, because when you make it, Pastor, we all get blessed. When you make it, we all get blessed. But I've got to realize that my mind is not about me because if he promised it to my grandfather, he can't help but see me through. Thank you, Lord. It says that, it says that at that time, that, that, that was two years that had already passed when he was talking to his brothers. Two years had already passed. And he said that there's five more that's coming. There's five more where there's no plowing or there's no harvest. Two had already went by. I was working my way to where I am right now. The hat that I wear right now puts me as Lord over, over Pharaoh's house. 
The hat that I wear right now, I can call this and call that. The hat that I wear right now causes me to be in a position to make a difference. But listen to me. There's going to be five more years of the same thing. That doesn't sound right, Lord. Is, is it not true that if I believe in you and I trust in you, that everything will work out and that it happened instantly? Never in, in my life have I read a microwave in the Bible. I haven't seen it anywhere in the Bible that things will transform overnight every time it happens. But there's a, there's a time and a process that must happen in order for victory to happen. Amen. Somebody right now is struggling with some things and you're saying, you're saying, Lord, I don't understand why you haven't seen me. And God is saying, it's all right. In, in five more years, I'm going to deliver you. In five more months, I'm going to deliver you. Five more weeks, I'm going to deliver you. Five more days, I'm going to deliver you. And from so some of you, God is saying, just give me five more minutes. Just give me five more minutes. Just, 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 just wait on me. And if you wait on me in the right way, I'll manifest it and you'll get the glory that you'll give back to me. Amen. Amen. We're overcomers by the blood of the land and the words of our testimony. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Five more. Five, just, just five. Tell your neighbor five more. Just five more. Five, but don't, don't, don't tell them days. Don't tell them months. Don't tell them years. Just say five more. Just, just five more. That's, that's all I need. Just five. If you can just hang in there, five more. Five more. The deliverance that God is putting us through, it, 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 it happens on a daily basis. But if we be patient with God, if we patient, listen, you understand, I gave my word to Abraham. That's what God is saying. I gave my word to Abraham. So, so listen, Joseph, it's okay. It's okay. The time will come and I will deliver. And I will not just deliver you. You're going through some pains and the rest of them just live their life. Don't it, don't it seem odd that when you just live your life, it seems like everybody around you is it's, it's just flourishing in what they're doing. It seems like the folks that don't even believe in God are getting a blessing above a blessing. Amen? And you say, Lord, why do I have to be here? Why do I have to be in this place? He said, because I trust you. I trust that you won't walk away from the job. I trust that you won't walk away from your family. I trust that you won't, you won't forsake your kids and say, I'm done with them. I trust you. But, Lord, they won't do what I tell them to do. Just turn them back over to the manufacturer. Just give them back to me. They belong to me anyway. When you learn that it's not by your power and by your might, but it's by my spirit, if you turn them over to me, I'll make their sleep be a, a, little, a little hesitant sometimes. They wonder what's going on with them. And I, I, Mom, I don't know what's going on. Dad, I, I don't know what's going on. I, well, I know what's going on. Your dad has finally saw, came in the door and started seeing about you. The father has started to move your mind and your, your heart. And I used to worry about my son growing up in this society that we have right now. And he said, how, how are you going to worry about something that belongs to me? How are you going to worry about somebody that I gave you? Yes, he will stray from, from the past a little bit, but I'm going to nudge him a little bit. I'm going to nudge him a little bit more. He's going to move back to this way. See, God is not going to pick him up and put him in the past. God's going to nudge him with an issue. He's going to nudge him back over to where he needs to go, and it's his decision. His, he will never take your decision-making process away from you. He'll nudge you, and you have to walk in the path of righteousness. So he's telling those parents, I need you to pray right now. I need you, just, just five more. Just, just give me five, five more. I'll change. Just give me five more. I'll change it for you. Listen, 1 Peter, the, the, the first chapter and the third verse, we won't read it. But understand this, that, that, that forgiveness is not just a thing you can choose to give to others. You just can't choose to give forgiveness to others. It's engrafted in you through your DNA. Your divine nature and anointing. Your DNA. Your divine nature and anointing. You, you, you were created to connect to someone else. You were created, and it doesn't matter what goes on. Thank you, Lord. It doesn't matter what's going on with you. That connection, thank you, Lord. God gave me a, a, a thing about coins, and he told, we pulled these coins inside of this being, and all of these coins were different. 
and all these coins were mixed together. And then I started to sift through, and, and, and it separated the quarters from the nickels, from the dimes, from the pennies. All these things happened. They were separated. And then we set the trays onto the side. And God's saying, this is society's plan for you, man of God and woman of God. It's to sift you like wheat. I want to separate you from this person, from that person, from this group and that group. And I'm doing it for, the, the, the enemy is doing it for a purpose because he, ne he knows that he gets two or three of you in together as one, that you're going to have the power and authority to tear down his walls. He knows this, so he's going to cause a little separation. But God is saying, when you realize that when two or three are gathered, the value when two or three of you gather together, is it, 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 can, it can buy anything in the world yeah. when we're unified. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. See, the body of believers says, stop. Stop putting on the nature of God like a coat. Well, shouldn't I put on the armor of God? Listen, I said the nature of God. You should put it on. It should stay on like your skin. Yeah. You see, because reality is I can take my coat off anytime I want to. But because I'm in my skin, I just can't take it off at all. I'm, I'm going to have to be born with it. I'm going to have to leave this earth with it. And if I just take on the nature of God and walk in who I am, God will bless. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Releasing people from this, I'm drinking, drinking of love. I'm drinking of the cup of love. I'm drinking of the cup of love. So forgiveness should come natural. Forgiveness should be natural to you. If you allow your flesh to be weaker than your spirit, it'll always be natural to you. Amen? Come on. It'll always be natural to you. Thank you, Lord. I thank God that Jesus himself went through a lot for us. He never did a thing, but he accepted, he accepted death for you. He accepted every lick that he was taken upon. He accepted being spat upon. They talked about him. They lied on him. But he stood there and he took it for your glory, for you to be lifted. I thank God for what he went through. I thank God that no one else did that for us because somebody would have quit on you. Men would have given up on you and they'll say, I'm sorry, you're going to have to die and be put in the pits because I can't take another lick. I can't take another lie. That's what men would have said, but, but Christ went to the cross anyway. He was obedient to his father for your sake and mine. There's nothing that you've done to deserve his glory. Nothing you deserve, nothing that you've done. You can say 9,000 hallelujahs and it still won't account for what he's done for you. Mm. Stand to your feet a moment. Thank you, Father. Bless your name, God. Mm. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be obedient. There, there, there are some, thank you, Lord, that have been struggling with this thing called forgiveness. It's unforgiveness that they've been struggling with. It, it's been hard for them because the person is so difficult to deal with. It's been hard for you because they won't listen. It's been hard for you. God's saying, I need for you to stand in the place. I need you to stand in my anointing on you. The nature, the nature of God. I need you to stand there. And I need for you to meet the needs of the person around you. Close your eyes for a moment. There's someone here. 
Thank you, Lord. That forgiveness has been so, unforgiveness has been so strong on you. And you just really don't know how to handle it. But God said when two or three are gathered in his name that he'll be in the midst. And, and I tell you right now, you have to get comfortable around your brothers and sisters and say, listen, I'm hurting right now. I'm hurting right now. I don't see a way through right now. But God is saying, I place men and women in this place today that will pray for you until you get a release. They will lift you up before me until you get a release. And if you want that release, you got to stand up bold enough to say, I've got it. i got an issue right now, and I want to lay it on the altar right now. Somebody. 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 Thank you, Father. If there's someone today that is struggling with something, I want you to be bold enough to walk to the altar. Walk to the altar. Carry, cast your cares on him, for he cares for you. Whomever that is, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name. Bless your name. There's something you're holding on to. You need to release right now. You need to release right now. I have a, God is saying, I have a mission for you. I have a call on your life. I have an anointing for you. And I can't place it on something that needs to be released. I need for you to release it right now. Cast your cares on him. Cast your cares on him. Cast your cares on him. For he cares for you. There's a release that's going to happen in this house today. There's going to be a move of the Spirit right now in the name of Jesus over everyone that will give themselves unto God right now. But you've got to give it. It's time out for you hiding behind the chairs. It's time out for you hiding in the balconies. God is saying he wants you, and I want you now because I want the release because there's a plan I have for you, and it supersedes what you feel like right now. God wants you. Let it go. Let it go. Release it right now. Release it right now. Mm. Thank you, Lord. 